Hey y'all, it's Paris and I'm back with another video. So today I want to share with you guys, God is saying repent and come back to him, okay? Repent and come back to him because it's not too late. So today I'm going to be coming from Joel chapter 2 verse 12 coming out of the, the message version and it says, but there is also this, it's not too late. God's personal message, come back to me and really mean it. Come fasting and weeping, sorry for your sins. Change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to God, your God. And here's why. God is kind and merciful. He takes a deep breath and puts up with a lot. This, this most patient God, extravagant in love, always ready to cancel catastrophe. Who knows? Maybe he'll do it now. Maybe he'll turn around and show pity. Maybe when all said and done, there'll be blessings full and robust for your God. Okay. So again, God gave me this message and he gave me Joel chapter two, um, starting at verse 12. And so basically what God was sharing with me was that a lot of his children, including me, okay, so this, this message is not just for you guys, but it's also for me, but a lot of his children have been weary and tired and you know you've been drifting away from him okay you've been slowly drifting away from him because of all the trials because of everything you're going through because of realizing that this walk this journey with christ it it it, it comes with a lot okay it comes with a lot and so the thing is, a lot of you guys have been drifting away. A lot of you guys have not been spending time with God. A lot of you guys have not been at least spending enough time with him. Okay. A lot of you have been, or a lot of us, I'll just say that a lot of us have been just, just saying like, God, like, when can we just enjoy our lives? When can we just breathe? Why are we going through so much? And so Again, your trials and tribulations have caused you to drift away from God, okay? And so God knows how you feel, all right? That's why he, he, he gave me this message, because he knows how you feel. But the thing is, we have to count the cost, okay? We have to count the cost. And so we have to realize that when we accepted Jesus into our lives, we had, we, we had to count the cost. And what I mean by that is, this walk is not easy. It doesn't even say in, in, in God's word that this walk is easy. And so the thing is, if you look at Jesus's life, if you look at all the stuff that he went to, if you look at all the stuff that he went through just to um, die and, 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 and save our sins or save us from our sins, don't you know that our walk is going to be hard too? If Jesus' walk was hard, don't you know that our walk is going to be hard, okay? And so I want you to keep that in mind. Jesus knows, he, he knows how you feel because he went through it. That's why he went through it first. He went through it first because he wanted to show us that it can be done. He wanted to show us that, yes, I know that, you know, Jesus, he, he never made a mistake. Jesus was, wasn't even flawed. Okay, he was perfect, but he went through the persecution. He went through the trials. He, he went through the false accusations. He went through the beating. He went through all of this. He went through all of this for us. <laughs> I'm starting to get emotional. He went through all of this for us, for us, for our sins, for our sins. So if anyone is feeling guilty, about the sins or anything that you've done, or maybe you, you don't feel worthy. Maybe you don't feel worthy, um, you know, because you know that God has chosen you. Please, please know that, 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 that God, he sees you. He hears you. He knows his heart. Again, Jesus went through it for us. He, he died on the cross for our sins. So he knows he knows how it feels to go through a hard walk. And so if God can die on a cross and rise again for us, why can't we go through this, this walk as well? Okay? 
Why can't we do the same thing? Again, yes, it's not easy. I know it's easier said than done, but when we really think about what Jesus went through just for us, just for our sins, just to save us, then it makes us really think and be like, okay, I need to come back to God. Yes, I know that I've been going through some, some, some troubles. Yes, I've been going through some trials, some tribulations, but I need to come back to God. I need to come back home. I need to go back to my father. I need to go back to my father because I know th that is where everything comes from. That is where freedom comes from. That is where blessings come from. It, it only comes from the Lord. From the Lord. That's where revelation comes from. From the Lord. Okay? And so the thing is, a lot of you guys have been seeking answers from the Lord and you're not getting answers. You're not getting answers. You're wondering why. How come God hasn't been speaking to me? How come I haven't been dreaming, you know, um, enough? How... How come things aren't the same? It is because some of you guys have been drifting away. And so you think that the bare minimum is okay. The bare minimum was okay in one season, but it's not okay in this season. It's not okay in this season, okay? Because God is growing us. He is maturing us, okay? And I say us because I'm included. So some of the stuff, I'll just speak for myself. Some of the stuff that I did in the last season, I can't do in this season. In order for me to go to the next level, some of the stuff that I did in the last season, I cannot do in this season. Okay? And so if you guys were, you know, um, eating baby food in the last season, God is saying, no, I want you on milk. Okay? I, I, I want you on real food real food, adult food. Okay. And so we got to grow up. We have to grow up. We have to say, you know what? I was the one who decided to basically walk with Christ. And so I'm going to tough it out. I'm going to endure it for Jesus. Okay. Because if Jesus can do it for us, if he can endure for us and for our sins, why can't we do the same for him? Why can we not do the same for him? And so the scripture says, come back to me and really mean it. Come fasting and weeping. Sorry for your sins, okay? And so some of you guys will need to fast. Some of you guys will need to fast. And, and, and also, this also may be a confirmation. Maybe God has already been asking you to fast and you've been avoiding it. I get it. I get it. A lot of people don't like to fast. I don't either. However, if God is asking you to fast, it's because he wants to give you revelation. It's because he wants you to come up higher. It's because he's trying to speak to you. It is because there is something that 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 God is trying to get get from you. Maybe he just wants wants to, he he wants you to spend more time with him. It can be as simple as that. And so we have to remember obedience is key obedience is key obedience is better than sacrifice okay so if god is asking us to fast just fast get over the fact that your flesh doesn't want to do it okay nobody wants to wake up and be like hey i'm gonna fast today not unless you know people are trying to lose weight but other than that nobody wakes up and says hey i want to fast and so the thing is if everybody feels that way, we have to deny our flesh. We have to deny our flesh and be like, you know what, Lord? I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. And so, again, God is asking you to come back to him. If he's asking you to fast, fast. Okay? If he's asking you to fast, just fast. He's saying, come back to me with a pure heart with the humble heart. That's why he says with fasting and weeping, okay? Be sorry for the things that you've done, the things that we've done, okay? Because again, we we sin every day. Even if it's not a physical sin, we sin in our thoughts. We sin in our thoughts, okay? I remember 
um long time ago when when um me and my history teacher was discussing God and we were talking about sin and I, I think I had I think I had made a comment and I said something like well if 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 if, if I could be just shut up in a room you know I won't have to worry about sinning and I remember him saying no you can still sin and I said how and he said with your thoughts and that and that has always stuck with me it has always stuck with me you can be locked up in a room and still be sinning because it's in your mind it's in your mind okay and so with that being said since we are bound to sin okay no one's perfect but since we are bound to sin we should be constantly repenting constantly repenting constantly coming back to god constantly asking god for forgiveness okay because we are not perfect we are not perfect right and so if you keep reading the scripture it says change your life change your life not just your clothes okay because some of us are changing our clothes but we're not changing our lives some of us are changing our 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 lifestyles as, as far as like buying a new car buying a new house all that stuff which is good right but we're not changing us we're not changing what's really important. We're not changing us. We're getting into new relationships, new jobs. But are we changing? Are we changing? That's what God is trying to get out of this. That's what God is trying to give you out of this message. It's okay to change everything around you. It's okay to change your environment. But are you changing? Are you changing? Because a lot of us will 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 move without even asking God. You you'll move to a new state. You'll move to a new city, trying to escape all these problems. But you haven't changed. You haven't changed. Okay. And so God is saying, "Come back to me and repent. Come back to me and repent." He's saying it's not too late. It is not too late. This message is, 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 is not to condemn you, but it is to convict you to go back to God, to go back to him and repent, okay? Because if we keep reading, it says, and here's why, God is kind and merciful. He takes a deep breath and puts up with a lot. I'm just going to stop right there. He puts up with a lot. And that is so true because some people in this world they're roaming around thinking that they're getting away with things because god hasn't punished them yet and they don't know that god is a gracious god he's a gracious god he always gives gives people time to repent before he gives destruction god always gives people time to repent Okay, and so if this is you, if, if 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 you've been doing evil and you feel like you know you're winning because nothing has happened to you, let me just tell you this: God is giving you time to repent. He's giving you time to repent. So if I were you, I would go ahead and repent now. Okay, because the the consequences that come with evilness, the consequences that 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 come with just doing whatever you want to do. The consequences that, that come with just doing whatever you want to do and not listening to God is so far much worse. It's so worse. So much worse. People joke about hell all the time, but it's not funny. It's really not funny. It's not funny because hell is not a place that anybody should want to go to. And so the thing is, if God is, is, if you are still living, if your heart is still beating, you have a chance to change. A lot of people, grown people, are basically saying, well, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to always be this way. Well, I'm older now. I'm 50 now. You know, I'm not changing. Okay. Okay. And, and that's the reason why your life is the way that it is. You guys know me. I'm going to tell the truth. OK, I don't care about, you know, uh, how this is going to come off. I'm going to tell you the truth. OK, and, and let the truth set you free. 
That is the reason why some people's lives are chaotic because they have that, that mindset. They have that attitude. They have that mindset that I'm never going to change. Okay. All right. Don't, don't expect anything more. Okay. Don't expect anything more. Don't get mad when you see other people being blessed. Don't get mad when you see other people's lives being elevated. Don't get mad. Okay, and that's the thing. People will get mad at, at, at other people elevating, but they chose to change. But they chose to come back to God. But they chose to obey. You were the one who decided that you weren't going to change. You were the one who, who decided that you were going to stay exactly how you are. So if that's the case, stay just like that. But don't get mad when you see other people in your in, in your surroundings, in your environment, elevating. It's because they chose to do what God wanted them to do. It's because they chose to humble themselves. Okay, because that's nothing but pride. When you have that mindset that I'm never gonna change, that oh, I'm older now, so I'm I'm I guess I guess I'm just stuck this way. That's pride. It is pride. Okay, again, I'm not condemning you, but this this should be to convict you. If you feel like I'm condemning you, that is that is the devil himself. The devil wants you to think that somebody is against you. This word is coming straight strictly from love. Okay, this is a warning. This is a warning. God is saying, come back to me. Okay, this is a warning because it could be worse. It could really be worse. And so if we keep reading, it says he takes a deep breath and puts up with the lot. Okay, so we, we, we went over that. Then it says, um, this must this this most patient God, extravagant in love, always ready to cancel ca catastrophe. Okay? So the, here here's the thing. Some people think that. God just wants to destroy his people. Some people think that God just wants to, you know, send tornadoes and 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 hurricanes and all this. No, it's, it's not that he's trying to destroy us. Like he's trying to wake us up. He's like, hey, stop sinning. Hey, turn your life around. Hey, come back to me. Hey, I know it's hard, but come back to me. Hey, come back to me and get this peace. Get this love. Let me take care of that burden. Let me help you out. Let me give you clarity. If you just come back to me, yes, I know it's hard, but just come back to me. That's all he's asking, okay? And then he says, who knows? Maybe he'll do it now. Maybe he'll turn around and show pity. Maybe when all said and done, there'll be blessings full and robust for your God. So maybe God will change his mind. Maybe there was destruction for you. Maybe God had in mind that because you were doing whatever you wanted to do, that because you had turned a deaf ear, Maybe he had in his mind that he was going to send destruction for you. But God says, but, but this word says he can change his mind. Maybe he'll change his mind. Maybe he'll show mercy. If you just come back and repent, that's all God is asking. If you can just come back and repent again, God knows it's hard. Jesus, Jesus walk was hard. If you don't know Jesus' walk, go back and read scripture. Start in Matthew. Okay, if you don't know where to start, start in Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They all talking about Jesus. It's the same story, just different perspectives. Okay, so read Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke and John. Again, same story, just different perspectives from different people. Jesus' walk was hard too, y'all. We, we forget that. We forget that. We be thinking this is just a story. No, this, this is real life. This is real life. Okay?
So anyways, don't think that I'm fussing at y'all, whatever. Listen, I'm talking to myself too. I'm talking to myself too because when I tell you like things, things have gotten like so hard, so hard. Okay. And I know why it's so hard for me right now because of the season that I'm in. Like I can't really tell you, I can't really explain the season that I'm in, but I'll, all I can say is that God is hitting me with these tests back to back to back because of what's on the other side. That's all I can say. God is hitting me with these tests back to back to back because of what's on the other side. Okay. And so it's like, I'm enduring it too. I'm trying to go through it too. And I'm like, Lord, like, can you give me a break? please like can you let up and he's like listen i got you i got you even in the midst of the storm i got you he keeps telling me that he's with me he keeps telling me to push that's why i keep seeing so many pregnant women he's keep, he keeps telling me to push push paris push push and maybe that's a word for somebody keep pushing even when it gets hard keep pushing some of us are so close, including me, like we're so close to the finish line. And, and, and when I say finish line, I mean to, to the next level. OK, some of us are really being promoted to the next level. Some of us are really being elevated and we're so close and we got to pass the rest of these tests. That's why they're coming back to back. <coughs> They're coming back to back. It's because God is trying to accelerate the process. He's like, okay, you passed that one. Here's here's another one. All right, you passed that one. Here's another one. Like it's accelerated because of what's to come. Okay. And so anyways, I, I hope and I pray that the right people will receive this message. Okay. I, I can't control the people who will look at this message and be like, uh, like you feel like i'm condemning you if you feel like that then this video is not for you but to the people who this video is for i really hope that you receive this i really hope that you repent and you come back to god come back to him like if you gotta cry cry pray to him fast okay again don't make no excuses don't make it hard just fast Whatever he tells you to do, if it's one day, two days, or three days, or whatever, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just get it out the way. Okay? Because you never know, like, your breakthrough may be right on the other side of your obedience. Maybe that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, maybe that revelation or clarity that you need is right on the other side of your obedience. So just do what God is saying. Just go through whatever he's asking you to go through. Go through it, okay? Because if you guys have watched my, if, if you guys have watched any of my testimonies, you know that God doesn't just let you just go through things just to go through it. Like there's always something better on the other side. If you guys seen, I keep bringing this up, but I mean it, it's relevant. But if you guys seen the story of, you know, when God called me to, you know, leave Alabama and he told me, you know, that I was moving to Texas, you guys know that my life just, it felt like it just fell apart. And I'm like, God, all this is going on just to move me to Texas. You know, like it just felt like everything was just falling apart. You know, like my finances went down because God told me to leave my job. I had a whole home. Okay, I had a house. And it's like I had to let I had to let go of that. And so it was just like God had to also humble me because I ended I ended up living with like um family members. It was like a lot of stuff that I had to go through that I didn't want to do. You know, but that's what comes with this walk with Christ. You will have to do a lot of stuff that you don't want to do because this is not our life. This is not our life. It's God's. When we have children, guess what? They're not our children. Yes, we birthed them, but that's not our children. 
it's God's children. All, all we're doing is just storing. We're just storing money. It's not our money. Just because we work for it, it's still not ours. We're just storing God's money. It's God's. Okay? And so anyway, just going back to the testimony, I went through so much. Okay? Again, I didn't want to, but that was part of my walk. I went through so much. And then finally, I moved to Texas. Then I was living in the Airbnb, not even knowing how long I was going to be staying in the Airbnb. But that was a tough, tough time because I lived with people that I didn't want to live with. But God allowed me to enjoy myself still. Okay? He allowed me to still enjoy myself. He, he allowed me to, to, to meet new people. Right? And so then months later, then God starts blessing me like just left and right. I, I get my own apartment. He starts restoring me. I get furniture. I didn't even have to pay. My rent was $500 a month. Like this is stuff that I never prayed for. You know, like it was just things just happening back to back. But I had to go through the process. It's like I had to suffer first. Then God restored me after that. I suffered, then God restored me. And that's exactly what happens every single time. I will suffer, then God will restore me. I will suffer, and then God will restore me. It's like, it's double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. One, one more testimony for you guys who still don't believe. For the ones that have been following me, you know about my court case that I had. You know that I was falsely accused, right? And so the thing is, I went to court. I went through, uh, I, y'all, I even went to jail, okay? I'm not ashamed to say it. Like, I, I went through a lot. I went through a lot. And the thing is, it's so crazy because the whole time that I was going through this, God tells me to buy a car, then he tells me to buy a house in the midst of my court court case still pending in the midst of my court case still pending. He tells me to buy a car and to buy a house. Did that make sense? No, but God told me to do it. And I was obedient in the midst of me suffering, in the midst of me waiting for my case to be dismissed, in the midst of me being falsely accused, y'all. In the midst of me being falsely accused, in, in the midst of my, my, my reputation being destroyed, God tells me to buy a house. He tells me to buy a car. What kind of God does that, y'all? A God who loves me. A God who loves me. Okay? And so I got the house. I got the car. I'm, I, I still have the car that God told me to get while I was going through my court case. While I was being falsely accused. Then after I got the house, guess what? My case was dismissed. Then a year later, my case was expunged. You cannot tell me that God is not real. You cannot tell me that God is not real, y'all. You can't tell me. You can't tell me that God is not real. And so anyways, God is just asking us to come back to him. That's all he's asking is to just come back to him. Just to repent. That's all he's asking is just to repent. I'm smiling because I'm, <laughs> I never try to cry on any video, but I'm, I'm emotional, whatever. But um, anyways, y'all, come back to God. Come back to God, okay? I pray that my two testimonies that I just shared, I pray that it blesses somebody. I pray that it blesses somebody because if I can go through things, if I can endure, you can too. Because I promise you, God, rest God restored me every single time. Every single time that I went through something, God restored me. Every single time. Every single time. But you have to live right as well. I'm not saying you got to be perfect, but you still got to live right. But you still have to seek God, okay? You still got to seek God. All right. So anyways, I hope that this blesses you guys. I will see you guys in my next video. If you want to book a coaching session or become 
a um, life coach, please go to my website at parismaze.com. Um, I have other courses on there. So just look at my website and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.